dusk, welcome to Realm of the Sacred Roots. I feel like it's been a while since I've had a chat with you guys. There's been a lot going on, and I don't know, I'm pretty sure you feel it as well. So um, there's been a lot of processing, a lot of things to uh, try to figure out uh, as we continue on in our journeys. So I'll talk a little bit about what's happening in the world at the end of this video. Um, but I'm going to do a separate video on that as well. Well, today I wanted to talk to you about plants and trees, a subject or a topic that most might find somewhat boring, especially if you don't work with them. But I wanted to show you how very real they are and um, how I feel like I'm a more well-rounded or balanced spiritualist because I incorporate plant life and animals, but plants and trees into my daily life, into my workings, and it makes such a big difference. Um, so I wanted to share that with you. Hope, hopefully you'll be able to get something from this video on plants and trees. So I wanted to tell you a story about a gentleman named Cleveland Baxter. He was an interrogation specialist with the CIA back in the 1960s. Well, he was known for his experiments with plants, and he basically had a theory of primary perception is what it's called. He claimed that plants could feel pain and that he actually believed that they responded when threatened or even um, the threat of being harmed, that these plants actually responded uh, to that. So his theory was actually reported widely in the media, but it was rejected by the scientific community who basically said, yeah, no. Uh, anyways, Baxter wrote a book and it's titled Primary Perception, Biocommunication with Plants. Um, I recommend you check that out. Well, what he did was take this polygraph machine and hook it to a leaf of the plant. And when the plant was harmed or a threat of harm, he said that it would register a change in electrical resistance of the poly on the polygraph machine, which was interesting. So that's what he was working with. Um, he was actually inspired by a physicist, um, Jagadish Bose. And Jagadish Bose was the one who claimed to have uh, discovered that playing certain types of music uh, would help plants grow. They would grow a lot faster when you would play certain types of music. And we know that today, uh, some people play classical music for their plants because it does help them grow. The problem with Baxter's theory was it, they tried to replicate it with another, a few other controlled exper experiments, but that attempt basically failed. Uh, they couldn't repeat it. So um, because it failed, the theory wasn't accepted by the scientific community and because it didn't follow the scientific method that it was supposed to follow. So that's pretty much Baxter's story, the CIA in in, um, interrogation specialist who uh, used a polygraph machine in order to uh, see what type of responses plants would give with that machine. So that was Baxter. Uh, so that was an interesting story. Now I wanted to tell you a personal story. So hold that in mind because I uh, more, more so follow his theory even though it was rejected by the scientific community because a lot of things that we do uh, as gifted beings, science maybe just hasn't caught up with yet. But we're able to still do certain things that might not be replicated or might be, but signs will eventually catch up and realize um, what what is what we are able to do. There is some type of fact fact that will back that up. So I support Baxter's theory. Well, anyways, um, I wanted to tell you about this herbal instructor that I had. I was taking um, these courses for a couple of years in order to be an herbalist. And so it was a clinical class where you have hands-on and things like that. Well, anyways, my in, uh, the instructor that we had uh, ended up 
uh, having this connection with trees because that's what she did. She worked with trees. So she had connection with trees here in the States. Well, she ended up going on a trip to the Amazons and in the Amazon, her, her guides who were shamans, as they were walking through the forest, basically said to her, the trees are telling us that they know you, they're familiar with you. And so that was interesting because she didn't have a chance to work with any trees actually physically there, but she worked with those same trees here in the States. So that was interesting in the fact that, and to me proves, plants, trees have spirits and they communicate. So if you're working with a plant here and you go to another country and you have that same or similar plant, that plant will recognize you uh, since you've worked with it before here in the States. And that's something to me that's very powerful because plants can be medicine. They even say that plants can change their physical composition in order to provide you the medicine that you need at the time but that's another story I didn't even I didn't plan to mention that but that that goes deeper in, into the into the classes that I took um so that was an interesting story also while we were in class the instructor had to borrow this expensive machine and it was a machine that you would hook up to the plant and it would play certain types of music so you she had it on like piano or something to that effect and so when the plant felt something, it would play a certain tune. So we had it in class. For the most part, it was pretty quiet. And uh, once in a while, you'd hear it play a little something, but it wasn't often. So people were walking back and forth in front of this plant. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and the plant didn't do anything. Well, I ended up leaving the class. And as I was walking by the machine and the plant, the plant started to play this beautiful piano music and everyone stopped. The instructor stopped talking. Everybody stopped and was watching and the instructor called me out on it and she was like, whoa, that plant hasn't sung all class. Everyone's been walking by it. All of a sudden you walk by it and it starts to play this melody. To me, again, it was because this is how I explain it. I work with the plants. I've worked with the trees. I spend time with them every single day when I'm out walking. I'm talking to them. I touch them. I communicate with them. This is a daily relationship or rapport that I built with these plants and, and trees. So yes, the plants will recognize my spirit and I recognize their spirit. So that is what happened. And that makes you... I want to use the word powerful. I don't know if that's the right word, but it 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 gives you more of an ability. Um, and like I said in the beginning of the video, well-roundedness about you. Um, it's cool to reach out to all these other things, but to me, plants and trees are here every and everywhere. And they're such good medicine and they're such great spirits about them. So that was the... Um, the next one. I also heard stories about the fires saying California on the West Coast warning the trees on the East Coast and scientists were wondering why the trees were acting a certain way. And it was because the trees on the West Coast were warning the trees on the East Coast. And here's what they say. Trees are all connected underground with their roots their root system. There's actually a, a name for it. I didn't write that down, but they share water and nutrients. So as they're sharing water and nutrients, they are also communicating through these networks. They're sending distress signals about drought and disease and insect attacks to other trees. So the other trees are able to alter their behavior, right? Um, when they receive these messages in order to prepare for what's coming. So I thought that was such a beautiful thing. Uh, trees communicate through the air as well. And they say that they can also detect uh, scents uh, through their leaves. So these are all things that, these are all notes that I wrote down that I wanted to share with you because I feel like a lot of times we look at them as just, that's a tree. And we walk by and we go about our daily life and we don't really think anything else of it at that point. But I just wanted to share these few stories with you 
to maybe the next time you walk past a plant, a vegetable plant, a flower plant, um, a tree, you might think a little differently that and know that they can feel and know that they can sense your intentions. And um, we, we also use the trees, their roots, in order to go to the underworld. That was the first time I used the tree roots. And in order to go to the astral, and if we want to travel other realms, we use their branches and reach up and go up. Uh, they're, they're amazing because they've been here for so long. They're so old. Uh, they've just been here forever. So I have such respect for them. I really do. Um, I melt into them. I just... It's, it's one of those things that's hard to explain. It helps because my higher self has a lot to do with nature and the elements. Uh, so for me, it's easier, I think, to communicate. It just It's more natural, I should say, but it doesn't mean that you can't communicate. And I wanted to write down and explain to you that when you introduce yourself, if you decide to give this a try, if you haven't done this already, um, a lot of you have, but if you haven't, when you go walk up to a tree, put your hands out and feel first, meaning don't touch it. Uh, give it its space, kind of like you want your space. You wouldn't want someone just to walk up to you and start touching you and da 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 Like It's kind of like asking permission. Put your hands out and feel the energy of the tree and see if it's receptive to you coming up and touching it. You're basically asking if you can just touch it and you can even tell it it's your, your intentions. It understands. Uh, they're just at a different vibrational level than we uh, level than we are. But you can put your hands out and, and ask. And most of the time you'll feel that warm welcome of go ahead and put your hands on me. And close your eyes and feel what the tree is saying. Just feel its emotions. See where it's at. A lot of times the trees talk to me when I used to go on my walk in a certain area. Um, in a certain area by a park. They would talk to me they would tell me um about trees that were cut down and some of them were still mourning the other trees um some of them i really i feel their pain and i still feel their pain i'm still i'm very connected to them um and so some of them fear being cut down and they knew one particular tree that I would work with knew that it was going to be cut down. So there was sadness from that tree. And I feel the sadness being an empath as well. You feel it from that tree. It's very powerful. I'm also here to heal these trees, to heal the plants. So I, I'm overwhelmed with it's kind of like people who are sensitive to animals and can't hear about animals being hurt, which I'm one of those uh, as well. But as well, I feel the same way about the trees and the plants. So, okay. And so anyways, that's one way to communicate uh, and touch the tree and see what you feel from them. And um, so, yeah. And then the second is also when you pick leaves or vegetables or flowers ask first and they always say to pull and when you pull if there's resistance and it doesn't come right out try another one that one's not ready yet to go try another one and then and go like that don't just rip it off right kind of ask and um also this is what i wanted to talk about there are a lot of things going on in the world right now and i want to do a separate video i'm really just thinking on how to approach it so let me do some thinking on it. But what I wanted to encourage you because of what's happening, look at the plants that are around where you live. If you haven't done this already and try to identify which ones are edible, which ones can you make tea from, right? Um, which ones can you make a tincture from? And maybe also some of them, like I just discovered I have a beauty berry tree here so I could now make jam and jelly from that and they say it's absolutely delicious if something happens in the world where you are low on food right or if something happens where you just happen to have it growing right outside where you live it's not a bad idea 
to identify it. Verify it with multiple sources first before you just eat something. Ensure that it's edible. And um, that might actually save your life one day. You don't know. So I'm going to work on that other video. It's kind of a heavy video. And like I said, because so much has been going on in the world, I I take that. I feel that. Um, the, the things in Australia, the fires, the the... the the animals and things like that. So I've just had a lot kind of weighing, but I will make a video about that and um, we'll see how that goes. So uh, I'm glad you guys had a chance to watch this video. If you stayed this long, hopefully you're already subscribed. If not, please subscribe and like, and I will be seeing you guys soon. Thank you.